Joshua chapter 3. I'm going to start reading in verse 1. Joshua chapter 3. And if you would, could you stand for the reading of God's word, please? Joshua chapter 3, starting in verse 1. And it reads Joshua started early the next morning and left the Acacia Grove with all the Israelites. They went as far as the Jordan and stayed there before crossing. After three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God, carried by the Levitical priests, you must break camp and follow it. But keep a distance of about a thousand yards between yourselves and the Ark. Don't go near it so that you can see the way to go, for you haven't traveled this way before. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourself, because the Lord will do wonders among you tomorrow. Then he said to the priests, take the Ark of the Covenant and go on ahead of the people. So they carried the Ark of the Covenant and went ahead of them. The Lord spoke to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, so they will know that I will be with you just as I was with Moses. Command the priests to carry the Ark of, Co of the Covenant. When you reach the edge of the water, stand in the Jordan. And may God have a blessing through the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. Richard, Father, I thank you for all your many blessings. And I yes. ask you now as I speak to your people. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Last week I talked about being anxious for nothing. Prayer, mm -hmm. but praying and, 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 and supplication and uh, God will give us a peace that will supersede our understanding. And I kind of talked about my process about getting this building and my heart and all the things that kind of we go through. And so now we're in a place where now we can talk about this text. All right. <laughs> and in this text, it's talking about crossing over. Crossing over. And the title of my sermon today is A Crossover People. Mm. A Crossover People. People. All right. Today in the discipleship class, Pastor Orr ended the class by saying, What is it about you that makes you a person? Or what makes us a people of faith? Mm -hmm. And he kind of paused for a little bit, but he kind of added, We must exercise our faith. Yes. yes. How many of y'all know we need to exercise our faith? Yes. And I'm becoming to realize that whether you want to exercise your faith, you're going to be put in a position where your faith will be exercised. Yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. So I guess I've come to the conclusion that no matter what I try to do, no matter how we try to run, you're going to be in a situation where your faith will be tested. Yes. yes. And so as our faith is being tested, we must be a crossover people. The last time I remember vividly when I preached this text because we were at the um, yeah, Garden of Gethsemane Church. And I remember I threw, I put a belt, I laid a belt on the floor and I had Dr. Austin kind of represent us and I had her cross over the belt. And I said this is, this is a significant time in our church's life because we're going into a new place. Meaning at that particular time, not a new physical place, but a new spiritual place. Right, right. And as I think about this text today, we're getting ready to go into a new physical place. Come on. Right. Come on. And how many of you all know that the word in this text for crossover is a bar? And I kind of went into that that day, and I'm going to do it real briefly today. A bar means crossover in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. But when you cross over, you're not just crossing over, you're crossing over into a new type of status. Alright, okay. So y'all looking at me funny. I said, okay, if they look at me funny, I'm going to try to explain this the best I can. So the only way I could explain this, I thought about it today because I said, okay, they may not understand. If you have been poor all your life and you live in a poor environment, people will teach you poor things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. Make it right. Y'all understand what I'm saying. There's certain ways that people 
that are poor live their lives. There's certain ways that people that are middle class live their lives. There's certain things that rich people do and how they live their lives. There are rules of engagement come on. that comes in social economic statuses. Okay, right. come on, come on. And what they say is it takes a long time for a family to reach another social economical level. Because usually people stay within their social economic level because nobody has taught them anything different. So you wonder why some of these NBA players who've been born in the ghetto and now they get millions of dollars a few years after their career, if they don't have proper management, they go right back to the same place because nobody taught them anything different. Come on, come on, come on. We have to get to a place where we understand that we have to go to different statuses on a spiritual level. Well, come on, come on. That's why it, it makes me happy not really, when Sarita has to stand up and testify about her relationship with her son. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because that's a necessary stretching that will take her to a crossover status Preach if pastor. she's willing to listen to what God is telling her to do. Preach, Pastor. Preach. Yeah. Anissa testified last Sunday the same thing. Right. Why we have to get to a place where we understand that a stretching is necessary for us to cross over. Right. But crossing over is not just to cross over, and that's the kind of message that I want to talk about. A crossover person or a crossover people or a crossover church cannot afford to get complacent right. after they reach a goal. Right. Yes. Right. Come on. Right. Come on. Right. Right. See it. We've been talking about getting a new building for a long time. Yes. We've been doing this and that and that and this and this and that. I've been telling y'all this and we're going to do this and blah, 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 blah. Now we're at that place well, where the text says, Joshua, I'm getting ready to take y'all to a place that you've never been before. Come on. So I'm getting ready to take you to a new place. Yes. God, thank you, God. God's still looking at me funny. They have endured. Captivity. Yes. In Exodus. Yeah. They have wandered around after they got the law in Leviticus. They wandered around in numbers. Oh yeah. boy, you better preach this thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Walk it. Walk it, preacher. Walk it. Then in Deuteronomy, Moses gives his last sermon. Yes. And he tells them, You will go into the promised land because we learned in discipleship class in the 17th chapter of Genesis, God promised Abraham. Yes. And his seed that they would have Canaan. Oh, yes. 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 So God is faithful yes. in what he does for his people. Yes. I believe God made us a promise as a church that we would have a building that we could be more effective than we were in 1515. Right. All right. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. Yes. yes. But I believe there was a there was a, a there was a process that needed to happen mm -hmm. in our lives. Yes. There was a stretching that was necessary yes. for us to be strong enough to handle <laughs> exaltation. Because some of us, you know, when we get when we accomplish something, we get satisfied. Yes. See, we consecrated for the building. Mm -hmm. Now we got it. The tendency would be to relax mm -hmm. so we don't have to consecrate no more because we have attained our goal. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh. No, no, no. <laughs> Here in this text, they have crossed the Red Sea. They have wandered around. Now they're getting ready to walk into their promise. So now they're outside of the Jordan, right before the spies have checked out the land. And they said, it's flowing with milk and honey. We got it. So now they're at that threshold to cross over. But some directions are given to Joshua. Mm -hmm. Take the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, when they was in the camp, the Ark of the Covenant sat in the middle of the camp, you know, I think, so the presence could just flow like that. Now the Ark of the Covenant needs to be in the front. 
Yeah, I'm preaching. But I'm showing y'all a metaphor. Last Sunday, Crystal testified that sometimes we don't see stuff that's right in front of us. So what I was saying, what, what I said was when something is front, in front of us, it usually leads us. But we can't see what stops us from seeing what's right in front of us. So I think, number one, a crossover people, point number one, expects God to move on their behalf. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying my heart and your ground, it was already done, but I didn't realize it because I didn't expect. Because I thought about all the times that I ate pork, right? And you know how, you know how we, start to, we start to philosophize and analyze our behaviors that could cause some complications. Yeah. When I should have ate one plate, I ate three plates. You know, I, I should have had you know, small portions, but I had big You know, we start to analyze. Yeah. And then we go to that negative place. But when we are crossover people, come on, yes. Yes. we have to expect God to move. We have to expect him to work on it. That's an attitude. Yeah. And it's bigger than just 1229 Logan. We have to become a people who expect God to move in our lives. Yeah. I want to put Unshine on blast, but she always said it, so I guess he made it public knowledge. Unshine said, I can get me a husband. She said it all the time. I'm going to get me a husband. Amen. Now, Uncle Joe well, was my uncle. Right? But guess what? I have to receive unshine saying I got to I got to get ready to see her with somebody else. Because she's making a declaration. What she's really saying is I trust God enough to give me a companion because he knows exactly what I need. Mm -hmm. oh, and we have to expect God to move. She's expecting him to move in his time. Uh -huh. You hear what I said? In his time. Yeah. In his time. Yeah. See, when we expect him to move, it's still on his time table. That's not in my notes, but I think I need to come back and hit that. Because sometimes we try to help God. That's what you said this morning, Pastor. We try to help God. Yeah. We make things want to move faster than when we're willing to wait. Mm. But we have to expect him yeah. to move. Yeah. I expect him to do something different in our new location that he has done here because now we are a crossover church. Yes. Not only did they cross over, see, they didn't just cross over socially, economically. Because did y'all know, even though they get across a new status, they still had to fight. Yes. They still going to have problems. But what really was going on to me was that when they were in captivity, they couldn't worship today the way they really wanted yes. to. Yes. Preach, preach. Yeah. Preach. How many of you all ever felt like you were in bondage for any type of reason? Amen. Whether it's financial, relational, physical. What happens when you become free from that? Ah, oh my God, that's a that's a that's a mighty, mighty good feeling. You almost feel like there's nothing that you can't do. Right. Because now you don't have all those parameters holding you and handcuffing you and keeping you stuck. Now you can move. The children of Israel crossing over to a place where they could worship God freely. Yes. Thank you, God. But they had to get stuff in perspective. And they had to let Jesus, they had to let the Holy Spirit, which is point number two, let the Holy Spirit lead you. Yeah. The Ark of the Covenant represented God's presence, and his presence had to be way up in the front. It says a thousand yards. Yes. Now, it was millions of people who had to cross the Jordan. Mm. He told Joshua, I'm going to do amazing things tomorrow. Yes. In the text, the amazing thing that he was going to do was help them cross the Jordan. Yes. I believe he's telling the Proverbs, in a few days, I'm going to do amazing things through you. Yes. How many of y'all want to do amazing things? Hallelujah. Now don't put your hand up if you just put it up just for folks to see it. Because I don't think, see, we had a wrong definition of amazing. To me, amazing is somebody that never goes to church comes to church. Right, right. 
it's amazing. You knew I was gonna talk to you a little bit. You knew I was. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't just let you, I can't just let you be up in the house and not say something to you. It's amazing that Mariana is at church today. Yes. How many of you all? She don't, I ain't thinking about Mariana. She's a baby in the church. I'm your pastor. I always be that. Yes. How many of y'all been praying for her to be here? Now, she may not come back for another six or seven months. But it's important that we drop something in her spirit and her two friends with her. She needs to know that we love her in spite of whatever she's doing. Because when we expect God to work, she gonna cross over with us. One thing about the text, Moses helped Joshua cross over. But don't you think it's a trickle-down anointing? Yes, it is. If Crystal crosses over, Mariana crosses over too. That's Kyrie right. does too. That's right. That's right. Amen. Oh. We get so caught up in the snapshot. Oh my God, oh my God. Mm. Can't get caught up in the snapshot. Yeah, 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 yeah. She can put on, I can put on Snapchat. And I drove far somewhere where Mariana was in court. I don't know where the heck we was at. Washington Woo! Washington County. I'm flying trying to get there. I could have held that snap. I'm not holding that Snapchat. Can I tell you what picture I'm holding? I'm holding a crossover picture of Mariana. That's a big point, man. That was crazy. Some of y'all remember. Some of y'all remember. Of her praise dancing with, with Josh and Angel and Mariama. And it's funny how Satan want to attack our kids. But when we cross over, whoo, shut up. They can't do nothing with our kids. They can't have them. Roma, Omar, all these kids who've been, who been growing up in this church. And God sees something powerful. He's put something powerful in them and Satan is trying to knock them off their square. Yes, yes. And with them being knocked off their square, it knocks us off our square if we let it happen. Hallelujah. Yes. But we're going to be a crossover people because we understand God is going to work out for our good and their good. We have to hold on to that. So y'all make sure that Mariana feels, Mariana feels some love today. Amen. Not to be embarrassing to her. We got to help kids understand that we, I know she's 21 or 22. She grown. Yeah. In a number. In a number. In a number. Because emotionally, some of us, you hear what I said? I heard us. Uh, are still in adolescence. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. That's not that's not in the notes. <laughs> not what you're supposed to say. Sorry about that. <laughs> Joshua encouraged them. But he told them to consecrate. If we expect God to work and we keep God in the proper place. See, we can't get ahead of him. We have to let him guide us. That's right. And sometimes the way he guides us, we don't want to go. Come on, come we're on. Fighting, come on. We're fighting, we're fighting, we're fighting him with the will. You know? <laughs> How is he going to <laughs> Comfort is over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It ain't peace of mind. It's no. comfortability. Yeah. Because right. some of us are comfortable in chaos and, and, and dysfunction and craziness. Right, right. But guys, I need you to cross over yeah. and let me guide. All this dysfunction. So many saints dealing with dysfunction. Y'all, we got to get better. That's why we're not healthy. That's right. But when you cross over, when you cross over, you're going to a different place. Yes. I told you, these norms that folks live by. We have to teach people something different. Why do we teach Christians 
to be underachieving, under, uh, under uh, living beneath your privileges, Christian life. Living beneath your Christian life is not about having a nice car or a nice house or nice furniture. It's about how do we become effective? Crossing over was a major event biblically. Yes. The children of Israel walked into the promised land. Yes. And I don't want to say we're walking into a promised land, but we all are walking into a promise. We are walking into a place that will cause us to have a higher calling on our lives. What you mean, G? What I mean is we should constantly be maturing in Christ. Yes. 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 So we should not just let this be the only a bar moment that we have. We should continually have a bar moment. Amen. Amen. A bar moment. When you cross over into something different, something special. And so the personal question is we have to ask, why are we a people of faith? What makes us that? But again, what are we going to do as we cross over? Are we going to stay back? What you talking about? Gee, I'm talking about us learning how to have success and not be satisfied with a major accomplishment. He told him to consecrate. I'm telling us, we need to consecrate even more because we have accomplished something great. You get it? You, you, you consecrated to get something, but now that you got it, the tendency will be to rest. Yeah, I know I said that, but I'm saying it again. Because we have to understand, Satan is mad at us. How y'all did y'all little video church? What y'all trying to do? We're trying to make an impact, a major impact. Right. Little church with a mighty punch. Oh. With, a, with a love and a care for the community. God, give us some space and we can feed people without having it be organized and packaged or the rules we have to follow. Let us have our own space and do our own thing. So now, we don't have to listen to Harrison's rules about not praying with them and not trying to get them saved, you know, all that stuff. Now that you come into our house while we're feeding you, we can say whatever we want to say. Oh, y'all, let's see. That's a happy moment. Yes. We have space Hallelujah. to have folks come in and have conversations. Mm -hmm. Why do you keep saying that, G? Oh, Scott, get ready to do something. I'm so excited. I want y'all to be able to participate with me. Hallelujah. I'm going to have to keep it on the square. Because all this coming late and, and, and all that stuff, first we complained that 8.30 was too early and 3 o'clock was too late. Uh, if you just move the service to the right time, I'm going to get there. <laughs> well, <laughs> you talking about crossing over. Crossing over. <laughs> People going to find, no matter what time, we're going to find an excuse. So now it becomes a heart condition. Ooh, that's not in the text. That's not in the text. In the heart act. Yes. We always find it. Get your behind the church so we can gather the saints together so we can pray these young folks up in here and have some power. And if you can go back to your job, to your community and have some power because you're not getting to church when you want to come, I don't need to listen to testimony. I don't need to practice. I just want to hear the word. Stop that. Well, well, you're minimizing your God. We got a God that can work through everything. He can work through the introduction of prayer, Hallelujah. praise and worship, testimony. He's everywhere. Yeah. And he does everything. But we got to cross over in our minds and understand church has to be a priority. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's right. Hallelujah. I grew up with them old folks saying, whenever the church doors open, I'm that's the kind of mentality I grew up with. Now we didn't got comfortable, microwavable saints. I ain't got to be there because I'm they got they got TV in, they got the word network, they got the love channel, they got all you can watch church all day. But why would the Bible tell us to forsake not the assembly? Why would he 
telling us that. That's what he meant. That's right. If you stop dragging, for real, you show some some gumption. Don't worry about who here, who not. You just give me a bitch and it become contagious. Sit here. That's all. Just get here. Get to discipleship. Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm stepping on the end of the day. Yeah, we got to cross over the saints. We don't want to be a we don't do we want to be a deformed church? No. At, at 9 at 940, the church get out of 10, we strong. At 8.30, you're just as feeble and, and weak. My God. My God. <laughs> Let's not even talk about Wednesday night. Let's not even talk about that. We anorexic on Wednesday. We're trying to fight a battle. And we weak. We not even, we, we don't even have, our legs are not strong. Our arms are strong, but our legs aren't. Our head isn't. Come on, y'all, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's be a crossover people. Let's be a church that's ready to make some moves. Yeah, you tell all the people who's not here that I this is what I'm talking about. And I'm so glad you can tell them, look at YouTube. Dwayne will have it up tomorrow. I'm talking to you. Proverbs saints who coming when they want to come. Yeah. Get here. On time. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. If you're faithful over a few things, he'll make you ruler over many. If you're faithful over the little things, he'll give you the big thing. How in the world? My God. It's the reason why Kathy got $7,000 raise. Yeah, she's faithful. Kathy will bring her grandson on the bus. How she got to get here to pray, to worship, to church? Rain, sleet, snow. That's right. I know I'm talking good. But it doesn't matter what I say because I'm not the blesser. He is the blesser. God, he sees your faithfulness. He can trust you with something else. Be faithful. That's what crossing over is about. Let's don't cross over. Let's don't get something new and just mess jack it up. Let me use language they understand. Let's go trick it off. Enough to believe if folks don't want to run with us, let the small remnant come. Yes. Because it's yes. more power. Oh, y'all. Because yes. in, my, in my, you know, we still got areas of our life that need to be healed. So I've always been in this thought process, and this is my last thought process. I don't ever want to be a church or a pastor that has to beg for money. We do one off, we've been doing one offering for 16 years. We don't do, y'all know we don't do no whole lot of that. Right. We sure don't do it. We didn't reach our goal. I need $17 to 15 cents. Y'all know we don't do all that, right? Right. So I'm saying, I see a lot of pastors who move too quick competing with their brothers and sisters because they got a nice building. I'm going to get a nice building, but I can't handle that. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my, my little mind says, okay, well, it, it's, if we go to a new building, the people just going to drop off and leave us out there. And I can see God doing this to me. Right. Let me tell you what that look means. Why would I take you there to leave you there? That's right. Because your heart is right. That's what he had to tell me. See, Crystal, when you said he loves me, that was a dealing with a heart issue. Yes. So I needed to hear that God loves me in spite of some of the negative thoughts that I can have about being scared about what may or what may not happen. But if I'm going to cross over, i got to expect him. Whether y'all shut down or not, his word and his mission has to continue 
to go on. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. So if y'all shut down, guess what? Now the Bible says if people wouldn't praise you, who? The rocks. The rocks cry out. The rocks cry out. Yes. Well, if you get in your feelings, then you know how folks do. I know y'all don't get in y'all feelings. Man. But God got somebody. Preach it. It's going to come. Yes. It's coming anyway. Yes. Amen. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to be on the front end of this. Get on board. Because some people don't want to be on board. I'm thinking about all my friends. And I said, this is my last one. Think about all my friends who told us, don't get that bill. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a. See, look at sister. No, we're coming in at 945. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Noah Smith Hill. That's not going to work, honey. I'm trying to help y'all understand. Oh, everybody in this spirit doing like this. Don't do like that. That's just what I'm talking about. You can't get here at 945 at the end of the sermon. You cannot. And I love her. She going to come and tell me after church and say, gee, you sure was right. She might be mad, but she going to say it. She might be shamed. So what? Time out for that, y'all. We got to grow up. Yes. Yes. We gotta be a mature church. Yes. Yes. No more flops around. Come on, Come on I get there. Yeah. Stop that. I get up at five o'clock every morning and doing devotion. No, I'm not talking that to Brian. No. Or here, Allison. We here at seven thirty praying for the service. Yes. The Wayne's here probably at six o'clock setting up. And y'all want to come here at 9.45. We have been up since 5 o'clock planning ministry. Yes. And y'all sliding in, smiling. <laughs> here come a hug. I'm getting him too. Woo! Billy, you coming in and you getting ready to get this heat, man. This don't work, baby. Hey, 9.45 don't work. Yes, sir. Brother Hill, if Sister Hill can't get dressed, leave her. Leave her. We need you here. Yes, sir. Leave her. What? Can I say something? Yeah. Real quick here, the pastor. What I appreciate about, appreciate about you, even during the service right here, you was already saying all this before. I know. You came in. Yes. And I appreciate you being real. So when they walk in, you still just say that. But you was already saying that before. Amen. I just want that to be on. It, it, that is, do you feel sorry for them? Don't worry about their feelings. <laughs> I'm not trying, to, I'm trying to massage them. We ain't, we're not massaging today. We're getting ready to cross over to another place. Oh, freaking preach. Man, I can around this building. We have to. Oh, yes. I appreciate the realness. It has to be. I'm helping them. And helping us. Brother Billy got anointed so strong. And been over to us, too. Quick way. Y'all coming in here this late. We can let it dismiss. But guess what they can say? Were you at church? Yeah, I was at church. No, you wasn't. Come on, y'all. And we want God to bless us. Yes. When we get in trouble, we expect you to be right on time. Yes. And we're an hour and 20 minutes late to church, but he better be on time. And then when he's not on time, we got the nerve to get mad. Come on, y'all, we got to cross over. Cross over. Cross over. That's, that's what time it is. Yes. No, I ain't thinking about y'all getting mad at me. I do care. I love y'all. Yeah. I know. Time out for that. It's time. It's really time out. And see, we're notorious for enabling people to be, to be mediocre saints. Because we think church is a place we should be happy folks here. Where would we be without God? There's no way the children of Israel don't cross over. They Mo, he told Moses when he gave him the Ten Commandments, y'all, if y'all folk the Mosaic Covenant said, you focus on this, you'll always be blessed. Yeah. You keep my commandments, you're, that's the Mosaic Covenant. Mm -hmm. 
That's, there's more to it than that, but that's, that's a big piece of it. Yeah. All we got to do is obey his law, and we'll be blessed. How I'm doing, Lord? Doing all right? <laughs> yes, yes go ahead. Um, yesterday in my devotion, I was supposed to call you, I didn't. But uh, praying for her, you know, when we moved into the building, uh, God reminded me of a scripture that uh, he had me to stand and read to you all uh, back in the winter. And I think we might need that. Really? Uh, it's John 9 and 4, and it says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. For when night comes, no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Amen. Amen. I'll stop. I'll, I'll stop fussing. Ms. Zulu, I didn't want to go preach to Matt. Is that what the story said? I got the story said the latest thing. You didn't want to preach to Matt. I didn't meddle today. I didn't meddle today. That's all right. 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 That's all Yes. Folks will feel free. Yes. To do more. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Because we are in our own yes. space. Yes. Amen. Able to do different things. Yes. And willing to come and listen yes. and be amongst folks that among them personally. Yes. Yes. I have some issues. Uh huh. And so I am not putting myself in our space. Well, others in a space that doesn't belong to us. Okay, yes, ma'am. But in a space that belongs to us, yes, I will endure. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. There's something about ownership. Remember, I talked about the freedom. We always in bondage to ten thirty. We got to be out. Y'all know we can't. But it's going to be different when you have that own space. Way different. Way. And sometimes, even though I'm busting, sometimes a new space changes behavior. But you got to be reminded of what behavior needs to be changed. Because sometimes we got habits that we think that are okay and we let stuff slide. Amen. And we don't say nothing about it. Amen. We're looking at the close of days, August 16th. That's what we're looking. That's what we're looking at. But see, the thing about it, you start practicing. Right. Right. That's right. right. Start getting right. right. I know what you're saying. We're going to get on your ear. And what do we have to do once we close? What do we have to do there? We can let you know. We're going to let you know for sure. We'll let you know exactly all of that. We have that meeting. We're talking about it. Pastor, grab me them. Grab me them trays. On the night, Jesus was betrayed. He took the um, bread and broke it. He said, This represents my body, which has been broken for me. He also took the cup. He said, This cup represents the blood of the new covenant that will be shed for my body. He told them, As often as you think of me, do this and remember this. And every month we take the time, the first Sunday, to think about the price, the sacrifice to Christ, um, shed his blood on and so we do that. Can we stand, please? And do that. Uh, and remember so. Who died for us? And in the in the morning prayer, our opening prayer, Pastor Bunsen said that the blood still works. And it does work because he paid it all this day on the cross. Let us pray. Richard, Father, thank you for your blood that was shed on Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. For we know that without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sin. Yeah, that's right. God, I ask you, examine us. Forgive us for any sins that we have committed. A word, thought, or deed. That we may not take this unworthily. 
God, I just ask you bless us now as we uh, take the Lord's Supper. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.